this video we're going to take a look at solving some trig equations and before we actually get into doing some examples I would like to talk about the different types of trig equations alright for when you first enter are introduced into this trig stuff you probably are taught several identities things like sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one alright that's just one example of an identity okay now it's called an identity because this type of trig equation is true for all values of x so no matter what value of x I put in there as long as I put the same number in there and there then this is going to be a true equation okay so we don't necessarily have to solve those because we know their identities all right but if you had something like sine x equals one all right we've got to figure out this is not an identity it's not one we know and we have to figure out what if we're going to solve that equation you know what value of x makes that true and there's only some values that will make that tra uh, trig equation true and so that's what we're doing we're going to solve this type of trig equation all right and some are going to have just specific answers and others one will have more general solutions okay now taking a look at what we know about our trig equations. Trig equations are periodic in nature, meaning like that sine wave goes on forever and ever and ever in both directions, okay? So when we are attempting to solve a trig equation that they place no restrictions on, like they're not giving you an interval to look at, they're just saying solve the equation, you're gonna write a general solution. And those general solutions are gonna be based on whatever the period is because these trigonometric functions are periodic in nature. Okay, so looking at your periods, cosine and sine have a period of two pi. Tangent and cotangent have a period of pi. All right, so when we, for every cosine and sine, trig equation that we try to solve all right and they haven't put a restriction on it so they just want like all the possible answers that there are so no restrictions you're gonna have to write your answer in the form of a general solution so you are gonna actually calculate mathematically a numerical answer that's gonna be one of them okay but then you're gonna need to add to that multiples of the period all right so plus 2 n pi where n is any integer and this will with n being an integer 1 0 1 2 3 and so forth then that is going to get you all the different answers in all the different periods because it goes on forever and ever in both directions that's that's the trig function thing it goes on forever in both directions all right if you are using tangent and cotangent Okay, again, you're going to be able to calculate at least one of those and find mathematically one of those answers. And then you're going to, to be able to get all of the answers, write it in the, a general solution form where you're going to add n pi or multiples of that n pi where n again is any integer. So n would be zero and then one and then two and then three, depending on what your interval is. Okay, so um, if it says solve the trig equation and it gives you no restrictions whatsoever, you will always write general solutions. If it says solve the trig equation and they tell you solve this trig equation on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, then you will only have X number of solutions. You will be able to numerically find every one of them. Okay, so with that background, let's solve one equation with no restrictions and then we will solve a second one that has restrictions on it. Okay, so we're going to solve two sine x minus 1 equals 0, and we're saying, okay, no restrictions, so I want every possible answer there is, so I will write my answer, my final answer is as general solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation, so 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0, and I'm going to attempt to solve this algebraically just like I always would. So what would we do? We would add 1 to both sides, so 2 sine x equals 1 all right and then we would go ahead and divide by that 2 so sine x equals 1 half okay now hopefully you've got enough trig um, background here at this point trying to solve for x I'm going to use inverse sine in other words I'm asking myself where is the sine curve equal to 1 half right here 
Okay, so um, I, I don't need to use a calculator on this one. If I, if you know your unit circle well enough, here, let's just sketch out a, a unit circle here. All right, um, we would have an ordered pair about here, and it would be what? Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. This is a unit circle here, and I'm hoping that you have this memorized. All right, so that right there would be 30 degrees, or in other words, that's going to be pi over 6. All right, so right there, sine is 1 half. So pi over 6 on your unit circle is one value here. So x equals pi over 6. All right, now if you know the rest of your unit circle, you're going to have another one over here, and that one would be negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Again, sine is 1 half right here, and let's go to a different color here. This right here would be 5 pi over 6. All right, so... Um, there are two right there that I've got, so equals 5 pi over 6. So I can calculate those two relatively simple. All right, those right there, let's circle them. These are two solutions, all right, in the interval from 0 less than or equal to x is less than 2 pi. All right, and I could do that just because obviously here's 0, here's pi, and then all the way around 2 pi. All right, those are going to be the only two places. All right, but it wants no restrictions whatsoever. All right, so let's take a look at this from a graphical standpoint. All right, so I went ahead and sketched this out. Okay, so this is my sine curve, all right, and showing periodic in both directions. Okay, now... Here is one half. All right, sine, you know, bounces in between negative one and one. All right, here's where one half is because this says sine x equals one half. So where does this sine curve equal one half at? Okay, so we found pi over six. All right, pi over six is right there. Okay, we also found in in zero to two pi, we found five pi over six. Well, five pi over six is right here. Now. Since they want no restrictions, they want every possible answer. Okay, so this pi over 6 is right here, all right, in this period. But in the next period, it shows up right there, red dot, red dot. In the next period, it shows up right there. All right, so as this sine wave continues to go in both directions, that 5 over 6, pi over 6 rather, is going to show up in every period. All right, the 5 pi over 6 is right here in that first 0 to 2 pi interval. All right, so in the next interval, it's right there. In the next interval, it's right there. So again, you're going to see multiples of that. All right, so I've got to write to tell someone, you know, I can't just say pi over 6 because I want all the possible answers. So it's this plus the period, plus the period, plus the period again. And then this one also, plus the period, plus the period, plus the period is going to get you all of those. So you write your answer in the form of general solutions. So you take your first answer, pi over 6, and you write down plus 2n pi, and it is assumed n is an integer. Okay, and then that's all you have to do. You've got your second answer, which is 5 pi over 6. All right, and then for a general solution, you put plus 2n pi, and again, n is any integer there. And this right here is showing that you're adding a period to each one of those answers that you found, which will then find another, this will find this one, this will find this one, it'll find the next one, it keeps finding them. All right, so when you are trying to solve a trig equation and it's not giving you any restrictions, it wants those answers as general solutions. Okay, now let's take another example. All right, let's say we're going to solve um, 4 tangent squared x minus 1 equals 0. All right, but this time they're saying, okay, I only want the answers in between 0 and 2 pi. So here's my restriction. So 0 less than or equal to x less than 2 pi. I'm looking for just the answers for this equation that fall in this interval. Okay, so again, we're going to start this like we would algebraically any type of equation. So we've got 4 tangent squared x minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So 4 tangent squared x equals 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So tangent squared x equals 1 over 4. All right, now this is, um, let's go ahead and rewrite that. All right, hopefully you recognize that the quantity over here is just being squared. So really, I've got tangent x quantity squared equals 1 fourth, which means what? 
opposite of squaring something is taking the square root and we got to add that plus or minus in there so we're going to have tangent of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over 4. All right, I can take square root of 1 and get 1 square root of 4 there on the bottom. It's going to give me 2. So tangent x is equal to plus or minus 1 half. Okay, now at this point, all right, this is not going to be on my unit circle, so I'm not going to be able to reference the unit circle. So I would probably recommend using a calculator at this point. All right, and you just got to make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Okay, so since it's not on the unit circle, we're going to solve it like that. Okay, now. Um, I'm not going to show that part because I am assuming if you're entering and you've been doing this, you can use a calculator and you can find these. All right, you're going to use that inverse tangent uh, function on the calculator. Okay, so I'll actually write out what you would put in the calculator. You're going to do tangent, inverse tangent of one half, and that's going to give you um, the 0.464, and then the negative one, I would do inverse tangent of negative one half and that spits out on your calculator negative 0.464 okay so not demonstrating that on the calculator I'm assuming you, you can do that all right now let's stop and think about this okay let's go ahead and write our general solutions okay I'll come up here and do that in red so our general solutions because that general solution is going to help us find the actual ones here in a minute Okay, so general solutions. All right, this is a tangent function. Okay, tangent function has a period of pi, so we're going to be adding n pi to both of these answers. So I've got x is going to be approximately equal to, since I rounded these values right here, 0 0.464 plus n pi, or x is going to be approximately equal to negative 0.46 plus n pi. Okay, so there are my general solutions. Let's go ahead and box those out because I'm going to need to use those general solutions to come up with just the specific ones that fall in between that um, 0 and 2 pi. All right, now since this is in decimals here, um, hopefully you could very easily turn 2 pi into a decimal. 2 pi into a decimal here is going to be like 6.283. Okay, so the same thing there, but in decimal, because I'm going to calculate these in decimals, it's going to help. All right, now remember we said that the n is integers, any integers. Okay, well, 0, this could be 0 pi, 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, all right, except I'm not going to plug in 2 pi because it's less than, it's not going to be in that interval, okay, so um, let's see here what we're going to have, um, let's just write them all out, so we're going to have x is about equal to, we'll take this first one, 0.464, plus 0 pi. We're going to calculate that out here in a minute. I'll do that in a minute. We're going to have x is going to be approximately equal to 0.464 plus 1 pi. And then we'll try x is approximately equal to 0.464 plus 2 pi. Okay, and then you grab a calculator, work these out here. This is going to be zero, so this one's just going to be 0.464 pi plus this right here is going to be about 3.61. I'll leave that arithmetic to you. 2 pi plus 0.464 is going to be like 6.75. Okay, so now from this, of these answers, which ones fall in this interval? Well, 0.4 obviously falls in that interval, so there's an answer. 3.61 falls in that interval, so that's an answer. Okay, but 6.75 does not fall in between 0 and 6.2. It falls outside the interval, so this is not going to be a solution. Okay, so I found this one, and I found this one so far. Okay, now I've got to test this one over here. So x approximately equal to negative 0.464. All right, and again, 0, 1, 2, so 0 pi. We'll add that up here in a minute. x is going to be approximately equal to negative 0.464 plus 1 pi. 
going through each of my intervals here. X um, is approximately equal to negative 0.464. We'll add that 2 pi in there. Okay, and then again, this is just arithmetic, but this plus 0 is going to give me a negative 0.464. This number plus pi is going to give me a 2.68. And then this number plus 2 pi is going to give me 5.82. All right, and then again, go through and check, is this number in this interval? Well, it's negative, so clearly it's not in that interval. 2.68, yes, it's in that interval, so it works. 5.82, yes, it's in that interval, okay? So, how many solutions does this equation have in the interval from 0 to 2 pi? It has four solutions. Okay, so yes, um, even though it has a restriction on there, okay, I did use the general solution to come up with the exact answers, but because there is a restriction, I can find exactly how many uh, solutions are in this interval, as opposed to just stopping at that general solution. All right, so definitely two examples here, uh, one of each type with restrictions, uh, without restrictions. Um, and hopefully it's giving you just a little foundation here of solving these trig equations by hand. Definitely thanks for watching. And if the videos are helping, be sure to share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.